If you want to build an approval workflow using no code tools, look no further than this video. I'm going into detail about how you can do this very thing using a template inside of Stacker. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I own Gap Consulting, a company that helps you to organize and automate your business and your life with no code tools. If that's of interest and you want to learn more, check out all the links below in the description of this video for more information. Now, before I get to the heart of this video, I do want to invite you to join me in my upcoming live webinar. I do a weekly training 100% live to teach you how to leverage the power of automation so that you can do more with your time and work less on those repetitive admin tasks. If that's of interest, do check out the link below. It's garethpronovost.com slash webinar dash registration to get all signed up. And even if you can't attend live, that's no problem. I'll be sure to send you the replay. All right, without further ado though, let's hop into the heart of this. We're talking about building an approval workflow using Stacker. And normally when you do an approval workflow of any type, there are a lot of moving parts and it can be difficult. But Stacker, if you're not familiar with it, is a user portal or a front end interface that can work with data on the back end. Now, typically I use Airtable as the back end source. Airtable, a relational database tool, is my kind of go to. But in this case, I'm going to actually be using a template that works with Google Sheets. Now, quick pause here. If you already have your approval workflow set up in Airtable and you want to put Stacker on the front end so that your users have that portal or that interface to you know, react or interact with your data, totally cool. You can certainly do that. But for the purpose of this video, I want to jump in quickly. So I'm going to be using that template with Google Sheets. So let's hop on into my screen and take a look at where we are. So we're building an app from scratch. Now, really quick rewind here. You know, after Stacker pushed out its latest release of, of new features, we now have a workspace, which is basically like a folder that holds multiple apps. So we can have a bunch of different apps that we can build here and they're going to show up on the left side and I can just add new apps here. Since I don't have an app in this workspace already, I can just click create a new app. And if I go to Airtable here and you can see here, I will only be getting the chance to name the app and then I'll be able to map it to my Airtable setup, right? Whatever database I have built already in Airtable to support this front end that I want to build. But in this case, I want to do that other choice, right? I want to go with Google Sheets. So I'm going to pop over here and you see when I make that selection, I now have the option of using a template. The reason this is so cool is, you know, normally, as I said, I would build this in Airtable, but if I can just create all the stuff I need with a few clicks of a button, why not? So once I go into template, you see that one of the very first templates that have featured here is the approval flow. And the whole idea here in their little subtext says receive and manage approval submissions from your team. So let's go ahead and install this and we get a little sample of what we're going to, you know, see. And of course, it's going to work with Google Sheets. Now, I don't have any Google Sheets built yet on the back end to support this. And that's part of the cool aspect of using Stacker with Google Sheets. Because when we go ahead and make all of these selections, you see that we get the chance to name it, choose an icon, give it a color, and uh, and then you know decide who has access to it. I'm going to go ahead and create it with those settings. And it's going to take some time to put this all in action. But the thing that it's really doing on the back end is creating the structure inside of Google Sheets. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it here and just really quickly rewind it once Stacker and Google Sheets have caught up. All right, so it took maybe a minute and a half to get that all set up, but now it says all done, app is ready to try out, check it out. So I have that one option, I'm going to go ahead and click it, and you see that not only is the whole app built for me, but I'm going to go behind the scenes and actually look at all of the data structure that was also created inside of my Google Sheets. So if you're ever using a template, I would strongly recommend you do the same thing here. But you'll notice that just moments ago, this new sheet was created inside of my Google Drive, inside of my Google Sheets account. It's called the Stacker Template Approval Flow. And if I click this open, you can see exactly what is displaying all that data on the Stacker front end. Now, if you're ever curious about what's going on, you can always kind of break it down and look at the sheets that are at the bottom here. So I have approval requests, 
I have projects, and I've got photographers. And this is going to perfectly align with the stuff that is going to be visible in our front end portal. You'll also notice that I have this stacker ID here, and this is what stacker is using as a unique identifier to track all of this data through its app. So all of these different fields here are going to be available in our app. And of course, if you ever start by using a template and you want to make changes to the kind of data that you structure, you can always add additional, you know, columns or fields here and map them back inside of your front end. So we have our approval requests, our projects, and our photographers here, and even some photos that are using a URL that have a file name here, as you can see here, that is giving us the photo for these uh, different users. So let's pop into the actual system that Stacker built on the front end. So again, we have those same three data sets, right? We have our approval requests, and we have a few different views where we can look at that information differently. And then we have our projects and we have our photographers. Again, images on our photographers, images also on our approval requests. And so all of that is able to be stored inside of Google Sheets using Stacker as the front end. Now, all of this came together with just the push of a few buttons, but I, of course, can make whatever changes I want. And the important thing to note is that any data that I'm changing here is going to be instantly reflected in my Google Sheets on the back end. So for example, let's look at those approval requests. I have, if I expand that column a little bit, I have this uh, new approval right here, hiking in Norwegian autumn. And we can see that the approval status is currently set to new. Well, let's go ahead and flip into our stacker front end portal. And here it is, there is the corresponding record here, the hiking in Norwegian autumn. Sure enough, the approval status is new. I can flip into my Kanban view here, which is gonna show me these different uh, approval requests kind of stacked up in three different categories. I've got new, I have in progress, I have approved, and then I have my rejected pile. So if I were to move this Norwegian autumn, I can just click drag it over into the approved column here and let it go. If I do that, of course, as I mentioned, that's going to instantly update the approval status. So you see that the approval status here just shifted from new to approved because it's now in the approved stack. But if I go back to my Google Sheet, sure enough, you'll see that that information was also changed back here because the raw data source has to also be updated. So again, Stacker is the front end, but as we're interacting with that data, it is updating the data on the back end source. So the way that this was put together inside of Stacker, we have our projects and each project has multiple approval requests. So let's drill into a project, in this case, Norwegian Landscapes. You can see that we have a number of different approval requests here and the status of those various requests is showing up here. And you also have a photographer that has been assigned to this particular project. So the idea here is that the photographer, in this case, Kevin, could pop in and submit a new request for uh, you know, an approval. And so he could go ahead and pop into approval requests, add a new approval, and you know, give the photo a title, add a location, link it up to the corresponding project, select himself from the list, of course, and take a photo, put date taken, et cetera, add a description. So all of our users have the ability to then interact with not only the existing data, but also to submit new requests. Now, as soon as that request comes in, then it would be up to the management staff or whoever was overseeing this project to make a determination. Take that new approval request and either move it to in progress, approved or rejected, depending on the different criteria. Now we can also explore the table view that Stacker has built for us. This is just another way of seeing that data as well. So in this particular case, I'm looking at everything kind of organized on one table and I can cycle through the different amounts of records here. Again, the Kanban view stacks everything in a status field. So I've got new, in progress, approved. And then of course in the gallery view, it's being displayed with that image kind of at the forefront of the record. So a pretty cool way to manage your approval requests. Now my team can pop in and add new requests here or see the status of other requests that they've already submitted. To really take this to the next level, you can then drill into these approval requests. And this is one of my favorite new features about the Stacker update, the ability to take notes right here inside of that record. So I can just take some simple notes, example notes here, and go ahead and post this up. 
I can even add attachments if I want to add an image or files and go ahead and post that. Now, once I've done that, you'll see that I automatically start following the chat in this uh, particular record. So if other people come in and add some additional notes here, I'm going to be instantly notified inside of the Stacker app. This is a great way for your team to stay connected so that they can communicate right here directly inside the app on the specific project with some date timestamps and everything else you need in order to track history of various comments and concerns. I hope you got a ton of value out of this video. I know that this is just barely scratching the surface of Stacker's new capabilities, and I'm really excited by all the templates they've put together. As I said, I normally would do this in Airtable, but given the ease of just clicking and creating that structure automatically inside of Google Sheets, I thought it was worth taking a look at and sharing with you all. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what questions you have below, and I'll see you in the next video. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly, and we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts, we have some online courses and a group coaching program, and for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.